Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of VT Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of physics, which will help you prepare for the VIT Tripoli exam. So let's start off with our first question of the day. Beyond which frequency the ionosphere bans any incident electromagnetic radiation but do not reflect it back towards the Earth? Is it 50 megahertz, 40 megahertz, 30 megahertz, or 20 megahertz? So, how do we solve this question? Well, the term bans any incident electromagnetic radiation means that they you know conjoin it so what happens is that the bands come to get, come on come to the ionosphere and then they get reflected somewhere else and not back towards earth so beyond which frequency this particular phenomenon happens is it 50 40 30 or 20 well um, when it comes to um, the ionosphere, uh, it reflects back frequencies which are used for radio communications. So local radios, they use uh, the ionosphere itself instead of satellites. And that happens at a maximum of 40 megahertz. So that means option B, 40 megahertz, is the right answer. 50 megahertz is more than 40, which is where you would uh, have to be reflected by satellites. So those forms of electromagnetic radiation would have to be reflected by satellites. And that holds true for, you know, television and the internet. Um, Option C and D, 30 and 20 megahertz. Um, these are incorrect because we know that radio communicators are can hold out at a maximum of 40. So since 30 and 20 are less than 40, they do not they are not the maximum frequency at which the ionosphere reflects uh, radiation back towards the Earth because you can go up to 40 and still get it through the ionosphere. So therefore, option B is the right option for this question. Now let's look at another question. A metallic surface ejects electrons when exposed to a green light of intensity 1. But no photoelectrons are emitted when exposed to yellow light of intensity 1. So when you shine green light of intensity 1 to this uh, piece of metal, it ejects electrons. However, it does not eject electrons when, it, when yellow light of the same intensity is put into it. Now, how do we make sure that... Now, the question here is, it's possible to eject electrons from the same surface by yellow light of same intensity, which is more than one, green light of any intensity, red light of any intensity, none of the above. So, which of these is the right option? So when it comes to the photoelectric effect, in order to eject electrons, we need a minimum energy, which is called the work function. Now this work function is basically what we call the minimum energy required to eject an electron from a metal. Now, according to our question, this work function is provided by green light of intensity I. Now, we need to make sure that using another light, we can get the same work function out of the metal and we be able to eject electrons. Now, how do we do that? Well, we need to make sure that the work function is related to wavelength or frequency. So let's consider, how is it related to wavelength? Now, work function is related to wavelength by the following formula. 
E max, that's the maximum energy, equals to HC by lambda minus the minus W. W here stands for work function. Now, if we were to take W to the left hand side, it will become E max plus W equals to HC over lambda. So what does this mean? This means that the dimensions on both sides are equal. So that means both Emacs and the work function have the dimensions equal to H times C divided by lambda. Now that all now what does that mean? That also means that the work function is inversely proportional to lambda. So when wavelength increases, the work function decreases. So that means for uh, a light source that's higher up in the wavelength spectrum, you need to provide more intensity in order to get the work function. So when it comes to the color spectrum, the wavelength of yellow is more than the wavelength of green. So that means we need to so that means the work function would gradually decrease for the same intensity. So we need to provide more intensity on yellow light in order to make sure that it has the same work function. So therefore the correct option would be option A, yellow light of same intensity which is more than I. Option B, green light of any intensity is incorrect because if the intensity of green was less than I, maybe it would not work. And again, red light for any intensity does not work because it needs to have a certain amount of intensity along with red in order to provide the actual work function. So work function is both dependent on intensity and the wavelength. It's just that when the intensity decreases, in decreases the wavelength has to decrease. So you have a higher wavelength, you need to provide a higher intensity in order for uh, the work function to, to be in order for the work function to be adjusted. So in order to get the work function for the same metal, we need to make sure that uh, the wavelength and the intensity are adjusted in order to eject electrons. And by the way, the energy that's work function is dependent on the metal. So if you have a different metal, then maybe the work function for that would be different. So therefore, the uh, amount the, the amount of intensity for any for every wavelength of light would also differ. So that's why option A, yellow light of same intensity more than I, is the right answer for this particular question. Next question, which of these has more luminous efficiency? A 40 watt bulb, a 40 watt fluorescent tube, both are the same, cannot say. Now let's look at the bulb and the fluorescent tube. Now in a bulb, you have current passing through a tungsten wire and the tungsten wire, after passing heat through it, after passing current through it, it produces heat and then it produces about 5% of light energy. So basically, um, if you provide 40, 40 watts to the bulb, only 5% of it would turn out would turn out to be light, while the 90, while the rest of its energy would turn out to be heat, which is wasted. So therefore, a bulb definitely has less efficiency compared to others like uh, LEDs. Now, how about a fluorescent tube? Now, in a fluorescent tube. UV rays are, you know, discharged from a central point, and then it hits the uh, the exterior of the bulb. And this exterior is coated with different metals such as mercury or sulfur, and these produce light. This form of distribution is actually more efficient than the bulb. We get about 25 to 30 percent instead of 5 percent for a bulb, a light bulb. So therefore, 
Option B, a 40 watt fluorescent bulb is actually having more luminous efficiency than a 40 watt bulb. So a fluorescent tube has more luminous efficiency than a bulb and the same power. So option B is the right option. Option A is incorrect because since it only has like 5%, it's, it's at the bottom of the spectrum when it comes to light sources. And uh, option C both are same is incorrect because we now know that a 40 watt fluorescent is more efficient. And again, cannot say is incorrect because we know that a bulb has only 5%. While whilst the fluorescent tube has more than that because of its because of the way it produces light. So option B, a 40 watt fluorescent tube, is the right option. Now let's look at the final question of the day. If we add impurity to a metal, those atoms also deflect electrons. Therefore, electrical and thermal conductivities both increase. Electrical and thermal conductivities both decrease. Electrical con conductivity increases, but thermal conductivity decreases. Electrical conductivity decreases, but the thermal conductivity increases. So, how do we solve this question? This question is based on a statement, an assertion that's given in the question, and then because of that, what happens? That's what we need to figure out. So the question says, in a metal, if we add impurities, those atoms also deflect electrons. So how does conductivity in a metal work? There are free electrons in the metal and when there is a, an electric potential, um, when there is an electric potential exerted on this metal wire, on the metal, the electrons move towards the positive end and that's how conductivity works. Now, as these free electrons move through the metal, they come in contact with the metal's atoms itself. And these cause uh, the electrons to be deflected during their conduction. Now, in a metal with impurities, since those atoms also deflect electrons, the deflection of electrons increases. Now, when you have an increased deflection of electrons, that means the conductivity of the same electrons decreases. So when conductivity of electrons decreases, that means the electrical conductivity decreases. So what does that mean? That means we can eliminate options A and C, because in both of these op options, they say that the electrical conductivity increases that's incorrect. Now we need to know how the thermal conductivity works. Now when it comes to thermal conductivity, let's use the same metal, when there is an increase in temperature, there is an increase in energy in the atoms itself. So as the temperature increases and increases, the atoms would start to oscillate about their mean positions and sometimes even move. However, movement only happens when the solid state when it's in the liquid state and the gaseous state. Now when it comes to oscillations, suppose there is an adjacent atom to it and then the oscillations off balance. So therefore there would be frequent collisions between the atoms themselves. So when you have impurities for thermal conductivity, so then there will be more collisions during oscillation of atoms when it comes to thermal conductivity. So therefore, since there are more collisions again, that means the conductivity of heat decreases So because there is no room for more oscillation, so there is no point in increasing temperature. So uh, if you further increase temperature, then the whole lattice of the solid would turn to a liquid, then only the atoms can move. Now, if you have an impurity, you've got extra atoms, which, first of all, requires a different amount of heat in order to start oscillating, and which also impede the oscillations of the atoms of the metal itself. So therefore, if you add an impurity, there'll be more, more collisions, and that means the thermal conductivity 
the amount of heat that you can pass through without melting it decreases as well. So therefore option D is also incorrect because it says thermal conductivity increases whereas if you have an impurity it actually decreases. So the correct option is option B. The electrical and thermal conductivities both decrease. Electrical because the movement of elect free electrons is impeded by the impurities and the thermal conductivity decreases because um, when because it's hard for the impurities to oscillate with more number of atoms present. So the impurities increase the number of atoms in there and atoms have to oscillate in order for thermal conductivity to work and that is impeded because there's more number of atoms because of the impurity. So therefore <clears throat> option B is the right option. Now that concludes this episode of Witty Workshop. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. Now, if you want to get the latest updates about our playlist from Witty or any other playlist, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video. And that's it for today. Until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.